You have no one to talk to. No real life friends. No online friends. No siblings that you are close enough with to vent or even to hold a conversation. Are you in a state in your life right now where it seems like the more you scream, the more your voice becomes faint in the ears of your hearers and those around you? You can't remember the last time you were happy or anything that has gone right in your life for some time now and it looks to you that you were destined for failure as well as being alone. It has made you to think that you have nothing to offer the world. Some might think that you have your whole life ahead, but you think otherwise. You've always been a lone ranger, losing friends. You've had friends, but they always have drifted away. And it looks like you can't hold a friend, let alone a conversation. And I guess you were saying that you are socially awkward. If you feel like no one understands you, then you are not alone. It's actually quite common for humans to be misunderstood. After all, other people don't have access to your thoughts, so they are never going to see the world exactly as you see it. Also, humans communicate via facial expressions, and facial expressions can be extremely misleading. So in the words of Heidi Hoverson, you are harder to understand than you think. But you can help others to understand you better. The desire to feel understood is not unique, it's a normal part of the human experience. But in most times, I have realized that feeling misunderstood usually leads to suffering. More specifically, it can cause feelings of anger, resentment, anxiety and sadness. It can also lead to social isolation and loneliness. For example, you might feel surrounded by people, but totally alone. Oftentimes, when others fail to understand us, it seems like they don't care about us either. However, this is rarely the case. Usually, people try their best to understand others, but things just get lost in translation. In all these, there is a message I want to share with you, beloved. When we are in the midst of something very personal and specific, we can feel isolated by our pain as we look around and think, there is no one who could ever fathom all that I am going through. In the midst of your loneliness, I want to offer you the hope that God has shown me in first Christ and also in His church, that only God understands you perfectly. This is because as much as we wish someone could come alongside with us and say, I'm in the exact same place as you are, and I totally understand everything you feel and that you are going through, we may never find that in none of the person on earth. God has made every single one of us unique with different stories and lens to view them. We each have our own levels of pain and experiences through which we face life. Even if they were going through the same trial as you, they could never get inside your head and understand every single thought perfectly. But God can. God formed you together in your mother's womb and carefully made each aspect of you. Psalm 139 from verse 13 to 15 says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. God created you and he knows you more thoroughly, more deeply than any other person can fathom. He knows how your body works better than your doctor and he knows how your emotions work better than your parents. God knows you perfectly. There is nothing you could hide from him or surprise him with. You are intimately known by God because he is your creator. Therefore, any step you take, any trial you face, any turn that you make, God already knew it. The struggle you are going through right now that you feel alone and that no one can understand, God does because he already planned it. In fact, he orchestrated it for your own good. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confessions. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, 
but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are and yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to hope in time of need. Jesus understands what it is like to be a human on this earth. He is well aware of what both our physical and emotional pain are like as he suffered on the cross for our sins. He knows what it is like to be tempted at your weakest moments. He knows what it's like to be left alone and abandoned by your friends. He knows what it is like to be in a difficult season that you cannot escape. As he prayed in the garden before the crucifixion, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Beloved, I want to end by saying that when you read Mark chapter 6 from verse 45 to 52, immediately he made his disciples get into a boat and go before him to the other side to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. When evening came, the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully for the wind against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, but they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take us, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. These men had been in the boat with Jesus before. They had felt the comfort of knowing he was right there. They had seen him walk mighty miracles. However, they were now in the boat by themselves, and they once again encountered the wind and the waves. The journey across the sea becomes difficult. Where was Jesus while this was happening? He was watching them from his perfect viewpoint on the mountain. This is great comfort for us. God is not unaware of our circumstance. He is not uninterested in our plight. Actually, he understands everything we are going through. It brings me great peace to know that Jesus put his disciples on the boat. That wind and those waves were something that Jesus wanted them to encounter without him being physically present. Why? Because that's how we grow in our faith. The sea in this Bible test serves as a picture of the Christian life today. God is present. God sees. God understands us and he comes to us in our need. Yet, in many ways, he places us in the boat and on the sea. He has shown us how to go out without him being physically present with us. The disciples had experienced that short-term trip so that they would learn how to trust that he is with us always. We may think that God is not with us because we don't feel him. We may think that God is absent because he has not yet come to our aid. But beloved, I want to specially encourage you that God is with us and he understands us more than anyone else. God knows the details of our life. In his time and in his will, he will come to us in our time of need. Stay blessed and stay encouraged. God bless you.